All right, all right, all right. Hello. Welcome to Coffee with Jem. I'm Jem. This is a Tuesday edition of Coffee with Jem. We don't usually I don't usually stream on Tuesdays. But this is a very important topic. It's a very important month. So, um, I hope my mic is okay. Um, you know, I plan for every contingency, right? I forgot that my computer, my laptop, needs an adapter for my headphones. And I loaned it to an offspring of mine. So, if I'd remembered, I would have gotten it back in time, but I didn't, so I don't have it. So, we're using earbuds. So, I see 24. Can you, anybody else, can you please give me a um, yay or nay on the mic? And if I need to bring the sound down any. Um, so, just let me know. Oh, and then we will get started. I'm very excited about today. I have a lot of stuff um, planned, and I just really, really hope it all goes uh, like, like I want it to, like it is in my head. You know, I have in my head how it's going to go, and we'll see. I hope it goes that way in the stream. So, um, okay. Well, throughout the show, if there's uh, any issues with the sound, just let me know. And um, I'll do what I can. And I'm trying to be real still so I don't bump the mic. So, yeah. Just let me know. All right. Here we go. Coffee with Jem. One of the things that I would like to do first is I would like to go over some rules. Okay? So... I hope it's okay. Switch my chair at the last minute, so we're gonna hope it works. And um, whoops! Don't look back there. Hold one second. Don't look. Let me raise my chair just here. You can't see my awful screen. In the back. <laughs> I cannot let y'all see that. Okay, let's try this again. Hi. Okay, much better. Yeah, I don't think it's cutting off my head. Okay. So, we're going to go over some rules real quick first, okay? Uh, oh, wait. First, let me start off. So, I'm Jim. How you doing? And this is Coffee with Jim. Now, I know the last few months I've just been doing a lot of gaming, but I also had originally intended for this show to be sort of a talk show kind of format, like a coffee shop setting just relaxing. People can come and go. We have uh, different people on the show. We'll talk about different things. We've talked about Extra Life. We've talked about women in the gaming industry. We've talked about um, people gaming with uh, maybe with disabilities or um, needing some adaptive uh, tools and whatnot. And, um, and other various things. We've also talked about um, uh, the different types of games that are in the gaming industry and today we're talking about autism so it's autism awareness awareness month um, it also is personal for me um, but even though it is personal I have been learning a lot such as don't Google autism no I'm just kidding there's a lot of things out there that uh, we'll get to that in a minute so my normal hours are Saturdays, Sundays, Mondays, and then once in a while on a Tuesday. I usually stream at late afternoon on the weekends and at night uh, on Mondays. Sometimes on the weekend I'm at night. So if you'll just click the follow button and turn on your notifications, you'll know when I go live. And um, I also try to keep you updated on Twitch. I mean on Twitter. This is Twitch. And my Twitter handle is at coffee underscore with underscore gem. If you don't have a Twitter account, or you just prefer to contact me by email, my email is texas.gem68 at gmail.com. Excuse me. So, how is everyone today? 
This is a Tuesday. It's a good day. I like Tuesdays. I was born on a Tuesday. Tuesday's a great day. So, um, <clears throat> like I said, uh, feel free just to give me a shout in chat on the sound. This is not my normal sound setup, but hey, always be prepared. I also was a Girl Scout. That's not just a Boy Scout motto. So, um, let's see. As I said, today's topic is autism awareness. Um, what that means for today's show is that we're going to talk to people who who d live autism every day. It's just a daily thing for them. It's not a once a year thing that they talk about. They can't just, you know, do a couple of charity events and then go home. I mean, this is their daily life. This is it. So this is what we're talking about today. It's also maybe to help people become more aware that maybe aren't aware. It's also to help maybe shed some light on some resources that are out there. If uh, you're somebody that doesn't have resources um, and also just to let people know that it is a bigger community and you know we're all in this world together and we've all got to get along so um, having said that I'm usually pretty flexible in my chat uh, there's not really a lot that really bothers me I don't like the F word uh, sexual chat can get a little too carried away in my opinion, but really for today, I am bringing the band hammer today. I hope no one tests me on this and I don't mean to be mean about it, but autism is a sensitive subject and we've got a short amount of time to do this show. So here's the rules for today. Where are my rules? Ah, my rules are missing. But here's what we're going to talk about. Here's what we're going to say. We're not discussing immunizations, whether or not they cause autism. We're not discussing parenting style. We're not going to slam other people in the chat or in my interviews because maybe they say something you don't like or maybe they um, say something you don't agree with or whatever. Okay, people have opened themselves up to lend me their words or their voice today, and we are going to show them respect. And if I have any problem with that, I will ban you. No questions asked. We can discuss it after the show. Okay, so having said that, let's have some fun. Okay, so um, the first thing we want to do is we want to talk about autism. So I noticed when I was Googling autism and Asperger's syndrome, I know now they've grouped everything under the same umbrella, but it used to be two separate, um, they used to be two separate things. That um, when I'm Googling, a few things hit me. One, there's a lot of inform a lot more information out there than there used to be. Two, it is 2018, and there are still some really ridiculous things out there being said, and even being said by some of these organizations. Let me just say, haven't spoken with some people this past two weeks, three weeks. Uh, there's still some things out there that are being said that we probably really should kind of check that. But you can't change the world in a day. Um, and then three, a show like this is important for both of those reasons. So, um, I also realized I probably should have gotten permission from a lot more people to use their graphics and their websites, but um, I think as long as I give credit, um, I don't claim any of the artwork from today, um, and uh, there are a few people I have had permission from to use their words, their websites and whatnot, and so um, I think we're pretty good to go. Um, if anybody's watching, you have a problem with something I've shared, please let me know in an email or in a whisper after the show. We'll take care of that. Okay. So, what they say. <sighs> Scientists 
this is what scientists are saying. I got this off the, um, this is the NINDS publication date, but I'm pretty sure I got this from the Autism Speaks. They had it quoted on their website. Um, scientists believe that both genetics and environment likely play a role in ASD. There is great concern that rates of autism have been increasing in recent decades without a full explanation as to why. That's from the Autism Spectrum Disorder Fact Sheet that the NINDS published on September in 2015. So, yep, yep. That is what they have said. Also, I will take that down and just read a couple of things from the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. What are some of the common signs of ASD, which is autism spectrum disorder? And a lot of people don't like that word disorder. I am not using that word today in a, a disrespectful manner. I am quoting organizations government organizations and I feel like I have to quote them properly but please understand that um, a lot of people don't consider it a disorder like ADHD is not a disorder and trust me it runs very strong in my family it is a wiring it would just wire we're all wired differently someone with ADHD just wire, is wired differently and they think differently and they respond differently to things so it's true with autism as well in a lot of those cases that it's it's not a disorder. I mean, it's just, uh, as one of one person says, and you'll hear them later on, it's a quirk. So um, many people, oh, so this is what they say, that many people with ASD find social interactions difficult, um, that children with ASD may fail to respond to their names, avoid eye contact with other people, and only interact with others to achieve specific goals that uh, people with ASD may uh, also have very different verbal abilities, ranging from no speech at all to speech that is fluent. And I will say that my nephew is considered a nonverbal uh, autistic. So, but he speaks with sign language. So, you know, what he, are you counting verbal as your voice? He doesn't use his voice to speak, but he does communicate. Uh, he's quite communicative, trust me. So many children, uh, this also is talking about repetitive and characteristic behaviors, that many children with ASD will engage in repetitive movements or unusual behaviors, such as flapping their arms, rocking from side to side, or twirling. Um, there's other repetitive, there's other repetitive movements that can be done that aren't quite as obvious as arm flapping or rocking or twirling, but um, this is what the uh, National Institute of Neurological Disorders has said. So, having read you all that from the government, let's see what, oh, I should have, I should have gotten rid of that first. Let's see what, um, oh, that's not what you want to see. This is what you want to see. Let's see what this person has to say. This is Laura Kate Dale. I'm trying to make that as big as possible. Okay, this is what she says. She is the uh, news editor at Kotaku UK. And uh, her website, I have her website here. Um, let's see here. The Kate Dale. That is her website. And she has given me permission to use this on the air as she was uh, tweeting it. Um, I believe from what I have, uh, I mean, she is, uh, she's on the spectrum. I don't know her specifics. I do apologize. I don't have my note right here in front of me. So um, I can get that to you in a minute. But anyway, so she's, uh, she's outspoken, but she's speaking from a personal perspective, okay? She has personally lived it. She is verbal. She has one brother, 
that is nonverbal. And so she she has a unique perspective, in my opinion, that she can she can speak for both sides, verbal and nonverbal. So this is what she has to say. For people who still think that the autism spectrum is a straight line from not autistic to fully autistic with measurable degrees of more or less autistic, here's a thread for you. Listen up. Autism is a spectrum condition with a whole host of different potential areas that can be affected to more or less degrees independently of each other. It's not a straight line. And she uses a persona level up shape thing just with more than five spikes. Now I'm going to be honest, I do not know what this is, but this is her diagram that she's using. Her examples are one autistic person might have a one in needs audio predictability, a four in needs tags cut out of clothes, a five in needs foods to only be one texture, a two in obsessive interest in monarch butterflies, a three in needs all doors closed so the room has predictably safe boundaries. It did not dawn on me that's why my nephew does that. Thank you, Laura. I did not realize that that's probably why my nephew goes and closes all the doors. Another autistic person might be a four in needs to stem when people are touching their things without asking, a two in needs to drown out noise by looping a song, a five in needs specific clothing texture, a one in can't read subtext, and a three in low verbal ability. These are both autistic people. Neither is more autistic than the other. They're just affected in different areas. You could compare their needs closed tags cut out stats and maybe compare what is affected on that stat worse, who is affected on that stat worse, but you can't compare the whole wheel directly. Autism is a spectrum, a whole variety, oh, sorry, cut that off, a whole variety of affected areas where from one person to another, some will overlap, but some will be entirely different stats. And as such, you can't objectively put them in a less to more autistic straight line. This is why it's so frustrating when, for example, verbal autistic people are labeled high functioning. And I do admit, when my nephew was diagnosed and we started really diving into it, we would hear the term high functioning and it was associated with verbal. So I like, I really like how she's pointed this out. Verbal autistic people are labeled high functioning. It implies that we're on a lower end of a binary line. That's not the whole picture. We might struggle with a bunch of other things, just that that one area, I'm sorry, I misquoted her, that one area, we're just okay. So yeah, autism is a series of persona stat screens, but with more data points. You can't put them on a straight line and get a proper picture of how much a person struggles with their symptoms. Um, and she goes on to say that probably a radar chart might have been a better analogy. And she goes on to say, as a person with autism who is verbal, but who has really at times crippling sensory issues that made traditional employment near impossible long term, the idea that my very severe sensory and planning issues get downgraded by my being verbal is frustrating. And I, I can see how she has a point someone's verbal and so you think maybe they don't have all the same issues as someone who's nonverbal and that's not helping her or people like her out because they have other needs as well that have to be met so I mean that makes total and perfect sense a person getting an Asperger's diagnosis in no way automatically means their sensory issues are less severe also of note they no longer diagnose Asperger's separately this is very true I will talk about that later as well um, these days, autism spectrum disorder is a blanket diagnosis. This is because as understanding of autism has improved, doctors have concluded that yes, just because someone is verbal doesn't mean they have a totally different condition. They have the same thing, they just happen to be verbal. Lastly, let's be clear. Uh, to be clear, I have two siblings diagnosed with traditional autism. Okay, so that's two one who had to go into specialist education for a while as a result. 
I mention this because I have experienced firsthand nonverbal autism. So that's what I mean. She comes from a unique perspective. When I assert that Asperger's isn't automatically less bad than traditional autism, I do this from a position of having been part of my brother's special education classes growing up. I'm not unaware of the unique struggles that come with nonverbal autism. And I think that's just really uh, fantastic that she wrote this, and I thought it was really sweet of her to allow me. She, one, responded to my tweet, and then uh, I was able to, to direct message her after that. And um, and she allowed me to share this. And I think that's totally awesome because I, I really think it's very, very, very important that we hear from the autistic community. When uh, back in the, I don't know, 50s or 60s, even 70s and 80s, uh, when someone was deaf, who, who, what did we do? We spent a lot of time making them hear, bringing them into the hearing community. Why? If they don't want it, a lot of deaf people don't want that. My granddaughter does not want to wear her hearing aids. She's severely hard of hearing. She does not want to wear her hearing aids. She doesn't want to learn sound language either, but she doesn't want to wear her hearing aids. She takes them out all the time. So, um, you know, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to learn sign language. We're going to learn sign language, and it's not just letters. It's not just the alphabet. There's a whole... They have developed their own vocabulary, basically, their own language. And it's just so much more than just spelling all day long. So, you know, for autism, I think we need to speak to the autistic community and find out what do you need. I mean, we'll have to find a way to, to, to ask them. We can't just expect them to fill out a questionnaire or something. So, you know, we have to take all that into consideration. Okay. So now that we know what autism is and isn't, let's um, hear from my guests. Oh, by the way, my guests today are not here in person. They are here today uh, via recorded interviews or maybe um, something that they wrote that they're allowing me to share on the air. Okay. Well, yeah, so what we're going to do now. We're going to hear from my first interview and um, I'm kind of proud. It's my little brother and uh, so we're going to hear from him and I'm going to start his recording. And please let me know if the sound is okay. All right, here we go. Give me one second. I forgot. I uh, turned the sound off a little ago. Here we go. All right. Okay, this is Jim, and I am speaking to my brother. Uh, may I use your name? You can. Okay, James Prater, and um, he actually has an organization called Puzzled Kennels. And uh, James, if you'd like to, I didn't put this question on the list I gave you, but if you'd like to tell me a little bit about maybe you, your family, or how you got into Puzzled Kennels, uh, just uh, would you talk about that? Cool. Uh, well, to start off, um, I'm a father of five wonderful kids. Um, my firstborn was Devin, and he was uh, perfectly perfectly normal at birth uh, shortly thereafter and I'm sure we'll get into that more in detail but he uh, was diagnosed with autism and uh, since then I've been trying and that was 13 you know years ago and since then I've done nothing but try to find stability in both my life his life and uh, his siblings lives and so in doing so I got to a point in my life where I felt like I had uh, ran into a kind of a stalemate where life just kind of balanced out and was just, I don't know, just real, real every day, same thing, same thing, same thing. And I said, man, I've got to break out of this cycle and push myself to the next level or find a hobby or something that I like doing. And I just absolutely love dogs. 
and I was already an owner of four dogs at the time that were just rescue dogs from the animals, local animal shelters. And, um, you know, I, I said, you know what, this seems like a pretty cool thing that I can actually take dogs to shows and get them, you know, judged on their personalities and their confirmation. Um, sort of like 4-H in high school, you know, when dealing yeah. with like cattle and livestock and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of the same scenario, except it's with dogs. And so at the time, my main focus and still is my main focus is autism and supporting Devin and trying to get him to a point in his life where he can live independently. And so I said, why not join the two together? And to be honest, I went into the showing and breeding of American Bully, uh, which is a dog that was newly created and recognized by the UKC, the ABKC, and, uh, you know, a couple of new registries that have popped up since then. Um, but it's a new, a new, a new dog. Uh, it's a crossbreed between American Pitbull Terrier and American Staffordshire. And, um, they pretty much combine the two to create a shorter, more stockier dog. And cool. really, really good temperaments. It has the playful drive as the pit bull would, but not the gamey uh, drive to where it can go hunt hogs. It's, it's not good for sportsmanship <laughs> at all whatsoever. Um, but they're, they're really good dogs. And so I got into these dogs. I've owned uh, some form of pit mix majority of my life, and uh, I said, this is what I want to do. So I got into it, and when I went into purchasing my first few dogs, I came up with a, a kennel concept where I took two of my, you know, most prideful joys, which is autism and dogs, and combined them together and came up with uh, puzzled kennels, and our logo is a, a blue puzzle piece which is representing autism and uh you know the autism community that's an, a known figure so i decided to use that for my logo and um every time we go to a show we use show banners and prompts and magazines and brochures to bring awareness to autism mm -hmm. while we're there so we're kind of you know doing two things awesome. at one time so we're promoting a new breed yeah. of dog which is exciting and awesome. And that also gives you an, a way to promote awareness of autism. I, I think that is absolutely fabulous. So, um, oh yeah, you're my brother, so you're used to me going out of order. So um, <laughs> that was actually like question number three I just said on my list, but that's okay. So um, <laughs> it's not just a once a month thing for you. Autism is day in and day out, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So what is something that you wish that if you just had one thing that you could get across to people who aren't familiar with autism or, you know, maybe they see it or maybe they give the funny looks at the store or something. What is one thing uh, nicely that you <laughs> wish you could make sure that they know that you could tell them about autism? There is there's a lot and it, and it's a it's a huge that's a broad question and I when you sent me that question I thought about it long and hard and I said you know what when I first when my son was first diagnosed like I said he was normal up until the age of two uh, just some history real quick next morning we woke up and our 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 child was was not the child we had the day before he was. Mm -hmm spinning around in the room, he had a glaze in his eye, was not answering to his name, was using the restroom in his pants. At this time, he was already potty trained, so everything had to start all over again. Talking, uh, he was not, he went from being a verbal child to being nonverbal. Um, and in the midst of this diagnose of autism, I was in a whirlwind of emotion and I had all these people saying early intervention is the key, um, change his diet, uh, routine and structure. And I was just like, hold on, y'all want me to do all this? I'm still trying to process. It was really hard and I had my moments where uh, depression was a major, major 
thing, but I had to push through it. I had to stay busy. I had to focus on the big picture, but I cannot count the number of times that I cried in bed, cried in the shower, cried on my way to work, cried on my way home, cried on my lunch break. And I'm, I'm talking about, I'm a pretty tough guy. Yeah, you, know, as my you are. Knows. <laughs> yes, you are. I, I was broken. I was completely broken. And, uh, None of the, that advice helped me. At that moment in time, none of that advice helped me. That advice helped me six years later. Uh, the initial advice that I would like to give anybody who's either barely finding out or still going through the motions of mourning, basically, because that's what you're doing, you're mourning the, ch the change in your child because the old child is dead. He is no longer there. Mm -hmm. He is a completely different child at that point. And so for anyone that's having to go through that, whether you're in the early months, days, or years of that change, the best advice I can tell you is to make sure that you are healthy. Okay. Clear, clear your mind of all toxins. Remind yourself that your sleep is vital. Um, make time for yourself to um, meditate. Mm-hmm and connect with some kind of higher power. And, okay. and I say that in general because not mm -hmm. everybody's God is the same. And at that point in my, right. my life, I was questioning a lot, of, a lot of things about what I thought God was. And it took me having to connect with some kind of higher power and keeping my body just as clean and as healthy as mm -hmm. I possibly could. Because had I not done that, I don't know if I would have adapted the way I did as soon as I did and was able to be there for Devin to give him exactly what he needed to right. get through the hardships. But that is the main thing I can tell you right now is that your health as a parent to a child with autism is just as important as making sure that that child's health is okay as well. Okay. That's some good advice because you're right. Everybody wants to give the advice about what to do afterwards, but it's when the parent finds out their child has whatever, your child's autistic, your child... Uh, Down syndrome. Yeah, yeah Down yeah. syndrome, your child has cancer, you know, whatever it is, that immediate thing, all this other advice in the world is not going to do a lick of good when you're still trying to deal with the... Di the initial diagnosis in the first place so I think that's some very sound advice. Obviously not everybody lives in the same size town. Some people are in small towns, some people are in big cities and not everybody has the same resources. What kind of resources if any have been available and then uh, what's lacking? Uh, this, this is where it gets really really scary for those that uh, are either going through it or fear it, something like this to happen to them. And, it, and it's not just with autism, it's with, like you said, a, a, a string of other things that could possibly happen to us in our lifetime that the United States doesn't have things in place implemented uh, for recovery. I mean, it, this is the sad part. The sad truth is when people see a need there's a dollar sign behind yep. it. So, I mean, th these are the kind of situations that are really, really, it, it puts your back against the wall. Um, the, the best resource that I've had for Devin, honestly, is through the school district, both in San Antonio, Texas, and in San Angelo, Texas. Um, the school district has really, at both, both uh, counties, uh, Bear County and Tom Green County, has been mm -hmm. wonderful. It has been the only resource that was immediate resource. Okay. Um, and when I say immediate, they get occupational therapy so many hours per week. They get speech therapy one-on-one -on -one, so many hours a week. These are things that you don't have to pay for. Awesome. Okay. Anything other than that, you have to pay for it. MHMR has some programs we signed up in 2009 it is now 2018 they sent me a letter yeah. four months ago and said that we are now down underneath the 200 mm -hmm. in line 
we're, we're like 169th in line. Oh, my goodness. And uh, we're going on nine years. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. Another question. Arc. Arc of San Angelo. So now, y'all are getting ready to do a walk. You do this every year. You have a team. You raise money. It raises money for Arc of San Angelo. Now, does it stay? Tell me about it, and does the money stay local? The... The Ark came to San Angelo, um, and it's really cool because these are people that have worked in the special needs department, and some of them were teachers that Devin has had. Um, just a real okay. good group of people. Um, and there's arts all over the United States. This is just the San Angelo chapter uh, that, that is here, and it all the money stays local. Correct. Um, every year they donate uh six ipads to six different children for communication purposes and learning tool ipads okay. are expensive we all know it um the first year i was blown away because Devin was the first one of the first recipients recipients of the um recipients sorry of the uh you've had a long day <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Again, autism, uh, you know, you yeah. better be healthy because, you know, the days do get long. <clears throat> but um, the money stays here. They bring uh, plays, sensory plays to the town for strictly for autistic uh, children and, and, and uh, young adults. Um, when our children do get older and graduate from high school, the ARC helps find local businesses that are willing to hire high-level uh, autistic individuals, and they go out and help place these young adults into jobs so that they can better, you know, take care of themselves and save up some money and pay their own okay. bills and all that kind of stuff. So the ARC is wonderful. I can't say enough about that group of people. Um, they, they really work diligently all year long. In fact, we just had a play leave here last night. That it came down for a couple of days. They did a play um, for the autism community, and, and then they're back on the road. But um, the art brought that here. So, the, I mean, it's just a year-round thing. You constantly see the money uh, coming back to the community, back to these kids, which is ultimately what we all do it for. Right. So any of you listening out there, if you if you don't know about art, check and see if you have it in your community because you might. Yeah, I, I, um, I want to look up that. There's a mother company that is pretty much nationwide, so there should be a chapter somewhere, you know, that they can they can find out some more info with. Okay, here I'll be sure and put all that information up too because we want to be sure we get this out to people. Um. So, the walk, I'm also going to be posting at this time the information about your team and how people can donate to your team because I would really like to get that support out there for Devin. And um, if anybody has any questions for you, I'll have them send them to me and then I'll filter them out to you. Oh, that would be, yeah, that'd be uh, awesome. That'd yeah, be awesome. that's going to be texas.gem68 at gmail.com and I'll put that on the screen. Awesome. Be well, I love you bunches, and thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. All right, it. love you too. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, bye-bye. All right, all right, all right. So that was my brother, and that's his perspective, what autism has been in his family, um, what they've, um, what he's learned from it, um, you know, they're still fairly new to it. My nephew's uh, just 13. So, um, but anyway, that's that's his experience. Now, not everybody's experience is the same. Uh, James's experience with autism is quite different from my next guest. Um, whoops, hello. It's quite different from my next guest, which is Elise. Now, Elise's son is also named Devin, but it's Devin with an O instead of Devin with an I. And her Devin is 24, and he actually pretty much did the interview. So, um, let's start with them. I'm going bye bye. All right, here we go. 
Okay, beginning recording. So, Devin, how about start with question number one? Why don't you tell Jem about yourself? Or Jem's audience about yourself? Well, my name is Devin. I have Asperger's Syndrome, which is a form of autism. I have ADHD, which is, you know, I tend to be a little hyperactive. I tend to, you know, I like, I don't really like standing still for a little bit. I have to have a need to be moving, but it's a quirk and we all have to live with them at some point. Okay, well, how about if you talk about your interests? Well, my interests are, I like video games, I like anime, I like TV series, Movies, sci-fi movies, fantasy, the horror sometimes, it's a very big if. And it's also the same with my love of books, also, of the exact same genre. Um, okay, so how about we move on to the next question? Why don't you read it? What is something that you wish you could tell everyone out there who's not familiar with autism? Well, autism is a very, very unique, I don't want to really say disability because I really hate using that word. I Quirk is the best word I would use for it. Usually it's very obvious if someone has autism because they have their own unique way of communicating and really so and we all are kind of socially awkward. If someone really isn't into our hobbies or interests, we usually try not to interact with them, but you know, and it's the best I can really say about it, but is that what you want people to know? No, that's not well, really... Well, that's the question. But me, I try personally to interact because I know that if I don't, then I don't really get anywhere. True statement. Is that what you want people to know about yeah. autism? Yeah. We, you know, we kind of communicate with people in our own unique ways. It's just people find it. Either they don't really understand or they think we're weird. Okay. And I think that's pretty much the best I can describe. Okay. Why don't you read the next question then? Here you want to be a voice actor. What can you tell me about that? Well, I always liked trying to do impersonations and sometimes when I'm not doing that, I try to make up my own dialogue try to, you know, make my own spins on certain stories when my parents aren't home. Um, and I try to take on different voices and, you know, try to make myself sound older, try to sound younger. That part's always hard. I can never do a very long scream for very long because I found it very difficult. The reason, you know, I've always liked doing different voices because, you know, it was something that I found enjoyable in my spare time, and if I could actually make a career out of it, that would be pretty great. Um, when are you actually going to make a recording of those and send that in to someone? Just FYI, we do this in the house for ourselves, but we haven't actually recorded it at all. So all this is practice, and we've been practicing for like 10 years now. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, but come on, man. Yeah. I exactly see a lot of advertisements, you know, though. That's because you gotta, you gotta make your own future there, buddy. Okay. This is one of those that you have to actually find your way. Is there anything else? Um, well, there's... A, two departments I'd want to do like a voice acting in well technically three if I wanted to be specific animated movies anime and video games I'm pretty sure probably the budget's probably vary depending on which ones you're doing 
Okay. Yeah. Anything else? I might even do audiobooks. Anything else? I, All right. Well, what's the last one? What kind of resources have been available for you and your mom while you were growing up? What resources were lacking? Okay, so this question probably is going to be more towards me than for Devin. Um, Devin was diagnosed when he was two and a half. So um, the bulk of kind of that answer, he was too young or wasn't really paying attention to it when he was uh, in school. Um, so when Devin was diagnosed, um, ABA, which is Applied Behavior Analysis, um, was just coming to the fore. Um, Lovas, Doctor, I think his name is Dr. Lovas, had just um, had come out maybe ten years before with his book um, about how to um, treat kids with Asperger's. It was it was all behavior analysis based. And then Catherine, I cannot remember what her name is, um, but she wrote. Um, a bestseller book about basically doing ABA with her kids. Yeah, I was, was too young to mm -hmm, really know You this. missed all that. Um, and so basically what happened was that was pretty much the, that was, that, that whole system was pretty much what we were told that needed to happen. Um, big problem for us was, is that that stuff costs about 40000 a year. Um, at the time I was a single parent and I was in, um, nursing school. And I, um, welfare. that's true too. We were on assistance at the time. Um, I was in school though at the time to be a nurse. I actually had to take a quarter off to get all this taken care of so that I could, um, get Devin pie trained cause he couldn't start any programs until he was. <laughs> um, and, uh, again, um, he, he was just a late bloomer. Um, so what we ended up doing is that my mom, um, so my parents actually helped to do some kind of modified behavior analysis stuff. Devin struggled with being able to tie his shoes and to drink out of water fountains when he was little because he just didn't understand. Um, he couldn't watch someone else do something and then replicate it. Um, he would get confused about the various components of the Not action. Like that anymore, though. That is true, but then you really struggled. Tying your shoes was difficult for you. You got pieces, but you didn't know how to put them all together. <laughs> Drinking out of the water fountain, you mm -hmm. got kind of making the, you know, purse lips thing, and you got pushing the button, but you couldn't understand how you got the water into your mouth. <laughs> While pushing say. the button, it was something you just didn't I get. Socially awkward. No, that's not socially awkward. That's autistic kids have problems being able to put pieces of a process together. They get pieces, but they don't know how they all fit together, and they can't watch another child and learn like neurotypical kids can. It's just one of your quirks. Um, so with that we had to actually break the act of drinking out of a water fountain down for you. And I need to teach you each piece individually. And that is how ABA works. The applied mm -hmm. behavior analysis works. They do that for everything, but you have to hire private teachers and private ABA therapists and private speech therapists and OTs and PTs. And we just and that's why it's forty grand a year. Or at least it was back then. I don't know about now. I bet you um, it's more expensive. So now. what we did, no, what we did is we got you into the special ed program at um, the school district that we were living in, but you had to be potty trained to get into that, which is why I took off a quarter to get <laughs> you potty trained. Um, and then at three, you started in the um, special ed preschool program, and it was one that you absolutely loved. I don't remember, know if you remember that at all. Um, but you actually really loved that program. You stayed there for what, two years or three years? Three. Yep. And then you started kindergarten at six, which was not a good experience for you. But, no, it was not. Um, back when Devin was little, we didn't have a lot of resources because um, he was one of many and everything was waitlisted. So really, um, and everyone pretty much kicked 
all the uh, autistic kids to the school districts to deal with, our local school districts. So we ended up, I ended up um, getting, he was put on an IEP immediately, which is an individual education program that comes through the IDEA um, law, federal IDEA law. And um, every single year I would end up duking it out with the school district from the age of three until he graduated at 21. Um, We actually moved school districts specifically for what they could do for Devin. Um, You did pretty well when we moved to um, the Grandview City School District. He uh, um, got an aide, actually, full-time aide for his whole school day, and that really helped and he also had a team of teachers that really got him um and they would make allowances for him to be able to to figure out like Devin did better doing his homework if he stayed after school so he would have an aide or two would stay after school with him until he finished his homework and that actually was something really good and Devin started learning what what he needed to be able to succeed and those are things again that autistic kids really need to learn is self-advocacy and and Devin actually did begin to learn some of those and then we ended up moving to another school district that wasn't nearly as good um but had its moments um his transition program was very good so that's where all of our resources primarily came from was from the school district there was one other program that Devin attempted to get in or was in for a little bit but it really wasn't very helpful and it was a transition program if i were to ever say one of the areas that really is very lacking in america as a whole is transition and adult services for autistic kids um there is almost no resources for autistic folks who are over the age of uh, 21 um and so um, even Ohio's um, MRDD program, which is what um, autism is lumped in with, if you don't apply and get accepted before the age of 22, you can't apply after that. Um, Devin's, gener- or Devin's kind of birth cohort and later are all these kids that got diagnosed at two and a half, and they're all now adults. Um, Devin's 24. And they still need support. But basically what has happened, at least in the state of Ohio, I know every state can be a bit different, but in the state of Ohio, um, basically us parents end up having to pay for completely unsupported with no really services for adults. So, um, you know, if... If Devin needs like an assistant to help him move out, then um, I would have to pretty much 100% fit that bill. And that's really um, hard, <laughs> um, especially when we still have, when he still has young siblings at home. So um, it really would be nice if there was more services, more help, more guidance, um, you know, for those of us who aren't millionaires um, in the world and really could help do with some assistance, even if it's just to kind of take some of the burden off of the 24, 365 days a year yeah, stuff for adults. For the time being, no use crying over spilled milk. That is true, but you would also do, I think, with getting out. There's no social group programs out there. You really need to be getting out of the house and having conversations. You're spending way more time at home than what you did in school because you, you know, had your lunchtime program and you had speech therapy. Well, you're too old for both of those things. So I now therapy, though. Oh, I know, but that's therapy. but that's therapy. Indi- therapy. <laughs> but that's individual, sweetie. You you don't spend as much time with people using your social skills. And I've noticed, I remember in high school, people with autism usually got isolated pretty dang quickly. That is true. And also, it doesn't your social stuff doesn't come to you as easy as others, so you need to practice them. Yeah. And I do maintain <laughs> eye contact. I don't just look at the floor. Well, that's good. <laughs> 
So I think that's pretty much it. I'm gonna uh, come off as like some serial killer or something. Good lord. <laughs> Jump, feel free free to cut that out if you need to. <laughs> I think that's it though. So um, I don't think we have anything else, do we? No, I don't think so. All right. I hope I answered your questions as as good as I could. Well, um, I think this is awesome. Um, Happy Autism Awareness Month. All right. Well, thanks. I hope Elise doesn't kill me for leaving that in there, but it was just too funny. It was just too funny. Our kids sometimes are like our whew, biggest, biggest uh, challenge sometimes when they want to say things like that. This is something so that one of my kids would have said. Now, Elise had something that she wanted to uh, share that she forgot to put into the video, so I'm going to read it here. Uh, I told her I would read it here. So, uh, oh, here, I'll put my camera back on. Okay. So, autistic folks, this is a quote from Elise. Autistic folks face an unemployment rate of 66%. Of those with college educations, 85 of those are unemployed. 85% of those are unemployed. If we as a country aren't going to hire autistic folks, then we have to provide services to them. Instead, what we do is force parents into precarious financial positions due to caring for adult children who want to take care of themselves but are discriminated against regarding employment. We have to do better. Remember, the current unemployment rate is around 4.5% nationally. So that was something that Elise wanted uh, to read. And she has a very good point. If we're not going to hire people because they don't think the way we do. And I'm not saying, you know, that they, uh, you know, you can find jobs. There's jobs available for people, all different types of people and, and thinking and education levels and everything. So we really, really need to include, I don't know why I'm so pink. We really need to include the uh, autistic community on that as well. All right, I don't know. I just have a red face. Um, so, words from others. Um, this first one is someone that wrote in, and this is what they shared. Um... At first, the question kind of threw them off a little bit because they were like, what do you mean, you know, what story? I don't really have a story. It was just, it was my life. I lived it. And I said, well, you know something, what was it like for you growing up? You know, what was your life experiences like? And I, it, it still really didn't, uh, I think it didn't really make sense at first because, because we're all looking at, tell me about your different life. And yet this person is like, I didn't know anything was different. This was my life. This is what I grew up in. We all, uh, most of us can relate to something like that. Um, so this is what they said. Middle and high school were interesting because my emotional uh, and his disconnect. But I learned how to communicate with him and how to read his emotions for what they were, even if they were very, very rarely verbal. I should say this was apparent. Uh, being raised by a parent on the spectrum. Um, so anyway, so this person said, I learned how to communicate with him and how to read his emotions for what they were, even if they weren't, even if they were very, very rarely verbal, they were constant. Beyond that, I don't know what I can really share. I don't know that I can really share a story having grown up with it because that's just normal life for me. But they did share a funny story. Never try to touch his feet. His reflexes are so fast, you'll be kicked across the room before he realizes he's been touched. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't touch my feet either. So that was, uh, I thought that was pretty neat. So, um, you know, these are just some things to just, to just think about when we're thinking about autism. Um, it kind of goes with, you know, here he is. He's saying, this, this was just my life. This is just what it is you know my my brother this is just life this is what it is at least this is just life this is what it is you know um they just they live it daily sure resources and things will help um because of how the world is uh resources are needed a lot of times but the fact is that it's just life so when i was um uh, looking around on twitter i uh found some uh, different interesting things. That's how I found Laura earlier 
and um, I also found this tweet and with permission I'm sharing it and our landing crew and they have a YouTube channel I'm gonna put their link in here so that's their YouTube channel so this was something uh, that she had posted am I the only autism mom who is really bothered when people act like being a mom to our autistic child makes us superheroes or like we deserve an award or something He's not some Olympic sport that deserves a gold medal for caring for. He's my son. I am his mother. And so, you know, I, I think we can go overboard sometimes on things. Uh, we, the non-autistic community, I guess I should say, and, and thinking that, oh, my gosh, you know, you, you're doing such a great job caring for this child. And they're like, what the heck's wrong with you? This is my child. Of course I'm going to care for them no matter what, whether they, you know, were missing limbs or uh, you know, uh, had, uh, some other, uh, you know, cancer or, you know, whatever. It's their child. It's not like they're going to go, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm not going to take care of you or, oh, I need an award for being a, a mom. She's like, you just be a mom period. But, um, also I think, um, on the other hand, so while we have that, on the other hand, we can't forget that we also have, uh, people that, um, and, and like I said, you know, I, I totally agree with what she's saying. It's totally, you know, it makes a lot of sense. But on the flip side of that, you have people that will use their autistic child like a trophy or like they deserve a badge of honor or um, something like that. I've, I've known some people like that. And it's like, um, just do your job. Be a parent. Be a grandparent. Be an aunt. Be an uncle. You know, just do your thing. It's family. It's just life. So, um, I thought that was interesting. But um, on the flip side, or another flip side, um, for those of you that maybe don't have a support group and we need to remember there's people out there that don't really have a support group they don't have strong resources they've just found out they don't really know a lot and then they're being bombarded like my brother said do this do this do this do this and they just want to know am I even doing what's right for my child am I making it worse am I doing everything that they need and sometimes they just need an encouraging word and we just need to remember that you know when you see that kid having a meltdown in the grocery store don't automatically think it's just some spoiled kid that's just not getting their way you don't know what the deal is maybe the uh, cashier came over the loudspeaker and uh, it overloaded the sensory issues and hence there's a meltdown going on you don't know what's going on Maybe they don't want you to put the can of peas in the cart. And they're insisting the can of peas can't go in the cart. You don't know what is going on. So let's just remember, there's just too much judgment in this world. And we need to all have a little more patience and understanding. Um, and don't forget that every parent, caregiver, provider needs to hear that they are doing a good job and that they can do it, that they can get through this, that they're not alone. Um, if you want to know more about any of these other resources, uh, please message me or whisper me here. Um, I'll put some of these up again. Um, And um, you can also message me. You can Google autism. Just be careful when you're Googling. Um, also, if you do hashtag autism on Twitter, a lot of things will come up, a lot of resources and organizations. Did I do Autism Speaks? Yeah, I did. And, um, you know, with that, just, just remember, we've all got, you know, we have one world to live in, and we all only have one life. Let's make the best of it. Let's be kind to one another and let's be a little more understanding. Um, so for that, I think that's pretty much about it. We're going to close up the shop. I thank you all for joining me today. Remember that you can follow me on Twitter. I'm uh, at coffee underscore with underscore gem. 
and my Twitch channel, of course, here is Texas Gemini. Uh, you can also email me at texas.gem68 at gmail.com. So thank you all very much, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.